Okay, so I don't know why I wore a black polo in <laughs> when it's clearly super hot here in the in the city. But you know, if I seem sweaty, you guys probably know why. Anyway, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Marco, currently a first year medical student of Ateneo School of Medicine and Public Health. At this point, I'm trying to make it into a wrap. Basically, this video is going to be about just sharing my experiences with Anki and how I've been using it throughout my whole school year, my whole first year in med school. Hopefully in the end, I give you guys some tips as to how you guys can improve on my mistakes when it was me who was using Anki. Anyway, let's go. Before I actually get into the meat and potatoes of the video, I first want to share with you guys a summarized flow or summarized view of my study flow. If you watched my vlog here, I pretty much talk about every step of my study routine, but here's a summarized flow to it. First is I review old cards. Second is I listen to the lectures. Third, I read the books. Fourth, I make new cards. Fifth is review those new cards. And sixth, hopefully sleep by 12 a.m. My whole school year, I've been using Anki as a memory tool, as a tool to help with my learning. So most of the things that I will be talking about today are just some pros and cons that I have experienced or some that I have seen all throughout the school year. So let's start off with the pros. First is making Anki cards have helped with my study flow, study routine. If you notice that me making Anki cards is at the third of the list, that is actually on purpose. It's because I want to listen to lectures. I want to read books first so that I get a full understanding of the lecture before I even try to make Anki cards. If I make Anki cards at the very start of this whole flow, I notice that I make a lot more cards and a lot of them are just factoids and not really some things that would trigger my memory regarding that lesson. I try my best to really listen to the lectures and really read the book to really understand the idea or the concept before making it into a card because more often than not, some concepts don't even need a memory tool or an Anki card or a flashcard to even remember. Maybe as an example, I don't need a card to tell me that there are seven, 12, five, five, four vertebrae in your body and that's already in order of cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and coccyx. The next point is, I noticed that retention is pretty good. Recall is a different conversation because I still find it hard to really nail down factoids or just recalling specific terms for specific definitions. But I think retention overall is better. So my experience is mostly based on a modular system because ASMPH is modular. So each module tackles different you know, subsystems or systems in the body. But based on my experience with head and neck where we had one final exam at the end, Retention over the course of that whole module was pretty good. Because the exam was comprehensive, which means we have to be tested from day one to day whatever, studying the Anki cards every day was immensely helpful because at the end, I didn't really feel the need to read the book anymore because they are already in my cards. So basically, that whole point is just studying every day helps with retaining the information, though recall still needs some work retaining probably like the reasons why certain structures look like that or whatever. They really helped. The third point of a big pro, in my opinion, of Anki is it gives me a sense of peace. Kind of weird, but the thing is, before exams, all I ever do really is to answer my Anki cards. And then after answering it, I'm pretty much okay. If you notice in my past few vlogs over here, most of the things I do really before exams is just to answer my Anki cards. It's because I really fully entrust my, my grades into Anki. I kind of believe that the cards I have comprise maybe the 80% that will get me a passing grade. Yeah, I mean, if I answer my Anki cards, which is just a memory tool to remind me of the things that I need to know, then I'm pretty much gonna pass. Maybe a personal anecdote to really drive home the point. For the second exam for our reproductive module two weeks ago, I got sick and not really bedridden, but I found it really difficult to stand up and go to my computer. What happened was 10 p.m., I already slept the night before, slept in, woke up around 10 a.m. and I was thinking, oh shoot, my exam's at 1, I kinda need to do stuff. Oh, you know what, never mind, I'll just sync my Anki mobile app on my phone, start answering all my Anki cards for the exam, and then sleep. So yeah, I finished answering all my Anki cards on my bed, on my phone, around 11, slept 11 to 12.30, took the exam at 1, finished it in 38 minutes. I have really high trust in my Anki cards. 
<laughs> way too much probably. With all those pros in mind, I want to move on to the cons that I realized over the course of doing this whole Anki thing. The first thing is that it kind of takes a lot of time to make cards. One factor that could lead to the fact that I make cards for such a long time is the fact that I take it slow when reading the book or watching the lectures because I really do double take. For example, if a prof says, this does this, I double back, rewind, listen to it again, and then decide whether or not I need to make a card. So that's one factor that could contribute to that. So if you, if you don't really need that much time to absorb information, then it might cut down time for you. But for me, I think it really just takes up a lot of time. To be fair, now I make significantly less cards in a significantly less amount of time. But if you're starting out, it might take some time to get into that flow, into that routine of making less cards in less time. And the second con, which I think is a really big con, is there is an incredibly high chance of burning out. Med school in itself is already energy draining, and if you add on top of that, answering old cards, making new cards, answering those cards, rinse, repeat. Personally, I have experiences back in head and neck, where in the morning before classes started, I would make sure to finish all my cards make new cards, read the book, review the new cards, sleep, rinse, repeat every single day. Even on the weekends, I would do that. That was incredibly energy consuming. I would study probably close to a thousand cards per day. So honestly, it, at that point, I just felt it wasn't really sustainable. So I really had to find another way, a more efficient way to do this whole thing. That being said, now I want to move on to tips on studying using Anki. Now, these are again based on experience and hopefully you guys have picked up some things already on the pros and cons side. These are more geared towards things that I noticed and are really catered to making my process more efficient. So it might be different for you, but hopefully you guys get even just a nugget of information from this. The first tip I have is to make your own cards. Now, there are great pre-made decks out there. I've tried Anking, I've tried Blue Mitch, I forgot, Blue Link. University of Michigan. Netters, I think there's a deck on Netters. Those are really good cards, I, I'll admit. They are really good resources. But honestly, for me, the way I use Anki is a personal memory tool. It's the way I want to remember things. So making my own cards makes the process more efficient because I get to choose what cards I want to make and what type of memory devices I want to do, what type of mnemonics I want to use. I haven't really come across a really good pre-made deck that is applicable to the Philippine setting. So if you use Anking, yes, there are some cards that are applicable, but there are also a lot of cards that aren't. Yeah, I used it in one exam before and close to 30% of the cards that were in Anking we didn't even discuss in our own lectures. Making your own cards that is geared towards your own coverage is a, a lot more advantageous than using pre-made decks. The reason why I like making my own Anki cards is because of the way I cater to my own type of memory, I guess. I really love the how does X happen or how does x cause x i guess more on just remembering why things happen i think that's why i i don't recall as much because i don't really make cards for recall more on retention so i don't know maybe second tip i want to give is to review old cards before making new ones the reason why i want to give this tip is because knowing the old information really helps ingrain the new ones especially if you're the type to really make connections. In my experience, even though modular system ang Ateneo, I still get connections from every single module, even though it's far off. So for example, we learn something back in cell, I still get to apply it back in GI. Connections like those really make learning a lot easier, especially if you're the type to get lazy if you have to read back. For example, me, I don't really like reading back. So maybe a good visualization, if this is the old card, this is the new card. If I memorize this card, master it, make this new card and then i realize oh shoot this one is related to that card it's gonna stick to my brain then when i see this card i'm like oh this is the one that's connected to this <claps> boom twice the learning i guess okay third tip i think this is the third tip already schedule when you do old card reviews and new card reviews because it can be daunting just having that much backlog quote unquote backlog and that much forward log i don't know what the opposite of backlog is so personally i just do scheduled reviews. Reviewing my old cards is always scheduled before 8 a.m. or before 9 a.m. Basically whenever before classes start. Reviewing new cards is always before I sleep. I try to make it a point to do both of these just so I get that satisfaction of having zero on my Anki before going to sleep. And reviewing new cards before I sleep is pretty cool because you review it before you sleep and then when you wake up you review it again 
That's already two reviews within 12 hours. Engraining information 100. <laughs> Fourth tip, and it's really vague because I myself haven't mastered this. If I do master it, eventually I will make a video about it. But try to make as little cards as possible, but make sure that they are high yield. One contributing factor, I think, to the reason why I used to make a lot of cards before is because I didn't understand the topic and I realized that, oh, I might need this card in the future. But with enough reading, with enough listening, eventually I realized that some cards don't really need to be made. And eventually, all the cards that I just make are just the things that I find high yield. I don't even know what high yield means. I think it's just, I think it's just a card that can apply to different topics. Basically, try not to make a lot of cards. It gets pretty tiring answering 200 plus cards for just one topic. Second to the last tip, finally. If you get a card wrong, try to grapple with it before pressing next or before pressing again. I think a common misconception is that the more reads you have, I think the more it will ingrain. Actually, it makes it easier if you take some time, so a couple seconds, a couple minutes, to just read through the card, make some connections and make some form of understanding about that card before pressing next. Honestly, time-wise, I think that's more efficient than having to press again, 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 again. One, it ruins the algorithm, and two, I get annoyed because, oh, frick, it's this card again. Why can't I get it? So why not just address the problem now, try to understand it fully, and then press next. 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 The last tip is more of a technical thing. I don't know if it's a technical thing, really. Basically, the last tip is Try to use images on the extra tab or the back tab or whatever. Try to use as much images as you can. I think it makes learning easier because you have an associated image of it already. It can be a mnemonic, for example, a random picture of a baby if it, the card is related to, I don't know, parturition. Or it could be the picture of the pathway itself. Something helpful that would help you jog your memory. You can opt to put it as a hint or as a backup on extra after you answer correctly, really up to you. But basically the tip is to maximize using images in Anki. Oh, okay, so that pretty much ends all of my tips. Hopefully you guys found like a little nugget of information. I do wanna apologize if I seem really sweaty right now, but it's really hot. <laughs> okay, so as a concluding thought to finally cap off this video so I can wipe myself down of all the sweat. Because a lot of people have been asking me, should I use Anki? Do you recommend Anki? Yes, I recommend Anki. And I only have a couple of reservations, but most of it is just how to use it. My personal recommendation really is just to use it as a memory tool to help you remind yourself of certain topics and like a personal testing tool. But beyond that, I think it's personal preference. So yeah, I would recommend you try Anki and hopefully you find your own spin to using it. That pretty much ends this video. Hopefully you guys found it entertaining, useful, hopefully insightful. Like I said, one useful information, perfectly fine for me. If you want to support the channel, you can always like down below and comment as well. Give your thoughts on it as well. If you disagree with something I said, do say it down below. If you want to see more of my videos in the future, if you want to be notified, you can always subscribe in the middle. Recommended videos and also recommended videos up there and down there. Hopefully see you guys in my next video. Peace.